Hello out there, and in front of you today is something completely different for this channel, right guys? Uh, what we have is a Microtech, and I've had a Microtech on the channel maybe once or twice, but I've never actually owned one, never had one in my collection until now. And the one that I got, the one that I got in a trade, um, I got it because I've always been attracted to the, the design. It's a, it's a great looking design, but the fact that it's an automatic has held me back from, from picking it up until now. In today's video, we're gonna go through all the details of the knife and just my impressions of it, sure. But then there's also gonna be just a little bit of discussion about uh, automatic knives, legality of, of knives, especially in Florida where I'm from, where everything is just so ambiguous. And then why this knife unfortunately just isn't going to be one that I carry and so probably won't be one that I keep. So let's just get into it. And the model that we're talking about, not to keep you in suspense for that long, is the LUDT. Doesn't want to focus. There we go, LUDT. And let's just bring it out. I got this one in a trade with my buddy Blade Collector 7. Really good guy. Um, I had a uh, a Northwoods knife that he wanted and uh, and he had this and yeah it really worked out and and here we go with the Microtech LUDT which stands for Large Underwater Demolition Team. Now when it comes to Microtech stuff guys let me warn you if you are in the know you might not get anything out of this video I am definitely a noob so when it comes to some of my information if I just sound like I don't know what I'm talking about um, that might be true. So correct me if I say anything wrong down below. When it comes to LUDT, I don't know anything about demolition. I don't know anything about underwater demolition. I do not know if this is a practical knife at all for that kind of application. I, I don't know. I don't know if you would carry this knife underwater. Uh, that's just the name of it. And I haven't looked into it at all. And I'm not going to because for my purposes, uh, I'm not going to be swimming with this knife. <laughs> but let's just start by talking about size and the blade. All right, taking a look at the overall length of the blade, it's pretty much in my like wheelhouse, right? Perfectly like sweet at three inches, barely three inches plus of cutting edge. So if we're comparing it to other knives, let's actually slide it and get it more in frame. If we're comparing this to other knives in size, the Mini Griptilian has a little bit more cutting edge on, but just uh, some more space overall, which is a good thing. Um, let's see, I have a bug out right here. This is a pretty decent size comparison as well. But still a little bit of extra length on the LUDT. And of course, just a lot of different shades of green here with the paramilitary too. A little bit longer cutting edge on the PM2 and a little bit longer overall as well. So, yeah, as far as size goes, it's just pretty close to perfect for me. And the blade shape and blade design is almost like a classic kind of look. Just extremely attractive. I really like the finish on it. And when it comes to the billboarding, I have zero issue with this either. I know maybe a lot of people won't like it, don't like a lot of words on their knives, but I do like things that are informative on my knives. So, um, the, the month and year of, of the badge that it was made from, I'm fine with. The serial number, I'm fine with. It doesn't seem like too much for me if it actually seems like it should be there, if that makes sense. So in this case, it looks good. Uh, the backside, uh, not looking at any kind of billboarding, just completely blank. And then down here in the corner, you can see the steel, M390. And when it comes to batches of Microtech knives and the steel, uh, what I'm told and, and what I've learned in the short time of owning one is that a lot of times you won't see the steel designated on a, uh, on a Microtech knife because the steel changes throughout batches pretty often. And so I don't know 100% all the different steels that have been used on this model. I am told by a couple of people that M390 is a pretty desirable one to have. Uh, you can also see them in LMAX. I don't know if they use S35VN. I think they do. But yeah, you, you need to, if you're purchasing one of these, you need to, to ask your distributor specifically, you know, which uh, steel is on the knife because a lot of websites, like I said, just won't have them listed because it changes so often, which is an interesting thing. I don't know where else that happens in the knife world. When we continue to move on back and uh, talk about the spine of the blade, it's really nicely rounded. It's a great looking, um, 
great looking spine of the blade, a little bit of extra work, and guys, I apologize, I'm struggling a little bit with focus, there we go. The jimping uh, is good throughout the knife, especially right here on the aluminum frame. When we get to the, the top of the blade though, you can see it just doesn't extend to the edges, and that might be for, I'm gonna have to insert some pictures and stuff, because this is not going well. All right, so that might be for aesthetic reasons, who knows, but um, but if this jimping head extended further and was sort of more square at the edges, it would definitely grip the thumb better. Um, this stuff is actually really good. Further up, it's usable and it's helpful, but it's not as grippy as it could be. So there's that. I mean, not really too big of a negative because there's a lot of it, so it does get some use, but um, but not as good as it could be. Ergonomically though, for me, the knife is pretty darn close to perfect. Just because of the shape of, of the frame here, it, uh, it fits my hand really nicely. Some people with larger hands might not be able to get all four fingers in this like uh, depression, this groove here. Maybe your pinky would be extended to this point, and that might actually be a significant negative if, uh, if that's you, but for me, with my like smallish to medium hands. But that said, I do have fat fingers. <laughs> I do have a little bit fatter fingers than some people. So even if you have larger hands, you might have thinner fingers than me and this could work. But uh, but yeah, for me, it fits really, really nicely and it's comfortable in yeah, a number of different configurations. When we get to the aluminum, I talked about this recently with the Benchmade Fact and I have it right here. Just the amount of machining on the Fact was really impressive. On this knife, um, there's not that much machine, machining, but there's contouring that gives you points of contact. We do have a powder coating to uh, to keep it from being like completely slick, but this is a, a very smooth knife. But like I said, with just the way that it actually fits in hand, it's not an issue because there's nowhere for the knife really to go. The fit and finish on the aluminum frame is impressive. I like it a lot. I like the design of it. Yeah, it just looks good. And then as we get on back, let's close it up, show you that, and take a look at the pocket clip. So what is a one position reverse, or not reversible pocket clip? Um, even if it were reversible, you wouldn't be able to do that anyway, and we'll get back to the hardware in just a second. A little bit of real estate poking up, but it's a good clip, a good retention. And, you know, with aluminum scales, sometimes I worry about just how smooth they are with a knife being able to slide in and out of pocket too easily. And in this case, it, it wasn't an issue at all. Um, yeah, but now let's talk about the, <laughs> the hardware. So proprietary hardware, I'm all for in some cases because it is extremely attractive sometimes to not have a bunch of like torque screws just staring at you. I'm not that big of, you know, I'm, I'm not that big of a... Uh, Hmm. I don't even know what the word is. I don't have a problem with torque screws. Don't get me wrong. But when there is just a little bit of extra flair, a little bit of extra like thought that goes into the design of the hardware, it does make the rest of the knife pop. Uh, in this case, though, there's nothing that you can do to take it apart. You can't adjust it without a specified tool, like a special proprietary tool. That costs more money. These things are $250 as it is. Uh, with Microtech, I know that that's one of the things that people complain about is you can't really take apart your knives. And from my understanding, I don't think they really want you to. <laughs> so, I mean, they want you to use a warranty service and send it back to them so that stuff doesn't get screwed up. And I think that's part of the, the mindset into having hardware like this. Uh, one of the things that I was told when I when I was gonna get this knife, when I was gonna do this trade, was that I needed to be aware of of how the, um, the lockup was because you can't adjust it without getting that tool. And we'll get back to the action in just a second. Pretty good though, right? So there is just a tiny bit of side to side, but no up and down. So this thing is in, I guess, the, the kind of shape that you'd want it to be in as far as lockup goes. So no real issue that I don't have the tool, but obviously just as a knife guy, I want to be able to disassemble my things and I can't do it. So that's, that's a negative. It, there's no way around it. Now let's get back to the action and talk about this automatic flying out. That is sweet, guys. I have some assisted opening knives that are really crisp, but nothing with spring tension like quite like this. I don't know what the internals look like exactly, but I mean, it is, uh, yeah, 
This is a knife that I really, I can close one-handed, but it just seems to be a whole lot safer to do it like two-handed and to do it with, with purpose, you know, and not to just do it casually because yeah, it does fly. It's, it's really cool. That's probably the coolest thing about the knife. And I mean, obviously for people who are into automatics, it's a big draw. Um, there's no functional need for me and, and what I need the knife for, for, for being able to open it like that, you know? So it's really just for, uh, for show and for, for fun. But I know that there are plenty of people, certain jobs where, you know, you can't open a knife with two hands or you need to be able to open a knife quickly. And the push button method is the best way. And so these are really useful for, for people like my buddy, Jeff Jewell, actually. So, you know, I, I understand that, but for me, you know, it's just about fun <laughs> and opening the knife. And there's plenty of that. So that's uh, that's the details of the knife from from my perspective, guys. This comes in at about two hundred and fifty dollars. I don't know that I see that just because I don't necessarily value the things that drive that price up so high, especially the uh, the the automatic aspect of it. But I do want to talk real quickly now, like a little bit of philosophy about why I am not going to be keeping this knife. It's not about laws, and it's not about um, it's it's not about uh, like concealed carry or getting in trouble for having an automatic knife. Just to let you guys know, in Florida, the state laws are extremely ambiguous. You can own automatic knives. You can't own ballistic knives. I, I don't really know what that uh, means. <laughs> it's really like I said, it's just murky. There are there's there's no specification when it comes to the laws. But you can own automatic knives and you can carry them in your pocket uh, concealed if you have a concealed carry license. But the, the laws change all over the state depending on what city and county that you're in. And they get even murkier or in some places they get clearer. And it's just, uh, it's just very difficult to know when you're doing something wrong or right. That said, when it comes to carrying an auto in my town, I have zero issue with doing it. I'm not worried about doing that. Like, like I was for a while and I sort of got over that and I decided I was going to carry this knife and I had no issues walking around town with this in my, in my pocket. Like it, it wasn't a big deal. Obviously no one comes up to me and like, and asks to see what's in my pocket. So it, you're not going to get in trouble unless you do something stupid. Right. What I found though, was that when I carried this knife, I didn't want to take it out and use it in public the way that I would just a regular EDC. If I needed to cut something, I didn't want to bust out uh, an automatic knife that's just going to fly open. Not from legality reasons, but just because, you know, uh, I, not wanting to alarm the people around me with anything that was intimidating. And uh, in my experience and, and where I work, I mean, I work in restaurants I have for forever. And so I work with a lot of young people, a lot of young adults who just don't understand knives. And while at my, my new job, it's super cool, actually, guys, uh, there are a ton of people who carry knives and it's, it's very neat, especially to see, um, people of like, like men, women, everyone just pulling out a knife and using it to break down boxes or whatever. That's, it's super cool. And I like where I work, <laughs> but I also don't want to be the guy who pulls out, uh, this knife in front of someone who's the wrong person and I'm their supervisor and they see something that they look at as a weapon. So I had this knife and... You know, I, I was trying to be in a position where I could use it and I realized it wasn't in the best interest and I ended up cutting boxes with this. <laughs> and this thing worked. It wasn't my backup. I mean, it's fine, but not really ideal, right, for, for breaking down boxes. And so if you're going to have an EDC, you're going to have a, a knife that you're going to carry, you want to be able to use it. That's That's the point. So... I don't have a spot in my collection for a knife like this if it's not going to get used and and I'm not going to use it because it's just not the right choice for the situations that I'm in. For plenty of people it is and they don't have to worry about stuff like that, but in my specific situation it just I know it would make some people uncomfortable and that makes me uneasy and and so I'll always carry something different. I would really like to hear your take on on that situation, guys, and because again, I was surprised it wasn't really a matter of legality. It was just a matter of the comfort of the people around me and then myself using the knife and just the realistic uh, 
you know, understanding that it just wasn't going to happen. So let me know your take on that aspect of it. What do you think of the knife? What do you think of Microtech overall? And any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, you know where to reach me, guys. I will talk with you soon. Thanks very much for watching this one. Have a good one.